ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Star Citizen. So, ladies and gentlemen, as always, thank you very, very much for joining me for a brand new episode of Star Citizen. And guys, this week is Invictus Week, so it's uh, Fleet Week this week. And keeping with the theme of uh, Fleet Week, uh, it's actually about to start in eight hours. So, Fleet Week or Invictus Launch Week, whatever you want to call it, is about to start in eight hours. And in keeping with the theme, here we are in the uh, Aegis Vanguard Harbinger. So today's the day where I will do a review on the Aegis Vanguard Harbinger for you guys. And I have some suggestions for the developers if they're going to watch this video, which I doubt they will. So, let's go ahead and exit the ship. Wow. Behold the sunrise, guys check this out so I purposefully waited here on Microtech until it's like right at the point of sunrise so you guys can see the awesomeness which is Microtech the planet and the Aegis Vanguard Harbinger <laughs> and this is my character right there he's super cold so currently we, we, we have uh, landed on this uh, lake, this frozen lake on Microtech. So that way over there is basically the city of New Babbage. So let's go ahead and get into the uh, the ship. So, as I said, this is going to be an in-depth review of the whole ship and, of course, some suggestions on how to fix some of the problems of the ship. Now, I don't review a ship until I actually fly it, until I use it for quite a while so that I know what some of its weaknesses are, what are some of its strengths, and how it can be improved, and so on and so forth. So... I doubt any of the uh, CIG developers will be watching this video, but if they are, I have some suggestions for you guys on how to, um, am I, <laughs> the wind is pushing me, I think, the wind is pushing me, whoa, this guy's cold, <laughs> so before I die, let me just go back inside, let me get back inside, whoa, check it out guys, just check it out covered in snow so anyways so if there's any CIG developers watching this video uh, I have some suggestions for the ship and how to fix the ship now you guys might be thinking well is there any problems with the ship yes of course there's just problems with the ship now let's go ahead and start inside the ship so let's go ahead and begin inside the ship so as you come through this is the cockpit so it's a single seat ship right here so you can get inside the the seat right like this like the pilot seat there we go so the moment the ship is turned off we're going to turn it on later so you have a whole bunch of uh, MFDs you have two on this side two on that side to be specific and some buttons here and there of course rudder pedals throttle hotas the stick all of that uh, kind of good stuff now again single seat uh, heavy fighter so this is what the uh, Vanguard um, Warden is the base model of course this is the Vanguard Harbinger which is a variant of the Warden the Warden was what came out originally I think it was 2014 it was so let's get in uh, straight away with some of the criticisms so these are the components right so these are the housings for the components right here so both of these two are and, and by the way i have maxed out this ship in terms of components uh so that's all of the systems like the the shields the coolers the power plants the uh, quantum drive all of that all of that stuff has been fully upgraded to the best there is so these are the coolers these are the two size two military a avalanche coolers uh housed right here and I'll get to that in a second. And this is the shield generator up there, which is pretty cool that you have these physicalized components here. The power plants down there. Okay, let's go ahead and open up the power plant. Come on. There we go. So power plant down there, shield generator up there. Same deal over this side. And of course, there's a thing, a component housing over there so you guys can see the uh, the whole point so the components are here 
right? The components are all over here. Now, one criticism about these components. How are you meant to take these out? So these are meant to be like physicalized items within the world, these components. So let's say you want to repair one, right? Let's just say you want to repair this power plant right there. How in God's name are you going to remove this power plant? How are you going to fit it through here? How are you going to move it out? <laughs> this, this railing is right here. And also, if you are going to just do repairs on this thing, how are you going to do the repairs? Check it out. <laughs> I can't even... Uh, like... I, I can't even move let alone repair anything here so I understand that they wanted to keep this these components in here uh, for you to be able to access it from inside the ship but I don't agree with that for the reasons that I stated so these components have to be taken out physically and moved so if you want to swap out a component it, you will no longer be able to do it from your Moby glass you're going to have to physically either pay someone to do it or do it yourself. Buy the component, trolley it in to here, somehow pick it up and put it in there. How are you supposed to do that? And also the second reason, what happens if any of these stuff get damaged and they leak? So for example, let's just like about the cooler. So what happens if the cooler takes a hit and it starts leaking acid into the cockpit? Isn't that a hazard? Isn't that going to kill us? Isn't that going to cause some sort of uh, secondary or tertiary problem within the whole situation? Like, shouldn't these these components all be outside? See, this is this is what what this is how I think about this. All of these components should be out here, right? They should be housed over here somewhere, outside the ship, where they could be easily accessed, easily removed, repaired, and replaced rather than have them inside the ship right so that's my number one criticism of the vanguard right there for you guys now let's go ahead and talk about the stats of the ship as well so the ship is 38 and a half meters long from nose to tail it is 40 meters wide from wingtip to wingtip and it is eight meters tall from the bottom of the wheels all the way to the top of the turret in the middle now as i said this is a version this is a variant of the vanguard warden which is the fight the heavy fighter this is the fighter bomber version of the uh of the warden and it supposedly is is able to um is basically the one that is the most heavily armored like in terms of physicalized armor which we don't have in the game yet now, the ship uh, is also able to carry, at the moment, um, uh, three size 5 missiles, which the normal Vanguard uh, Warden is not able to carry, and it can carry also additional missiles as well. So, basically, what it says on the website is that the normal Warden's drop pod is it or is it a survival pod escape pod is being replaced by this missile bay right here so this is this is where the the torpedoes the size 5 torpedoes torpedoes are and it's really really cool you guys can see how cool it is you can actually see the three size 5 torpedoes in here they just drop uh, in succession and they go and uh, attack the target which you've uh, locked now so that's criticism number one these components now, how should they fix this? So this is this is my suggestion for f getting rid of this component problems here. Basically, let's just put these things outside. I mean, that's 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 how it makes sense, right? Like, like modern day fighters. Uh, when you, you when you work on a modern day fighter, when you see the the crew chiefs and stuff like that uh, work on a modern day fighter, all of the equipment is outside the radar and everything and also have a look at this in case I forget <laughs> what is this what is this in here apparently this is supposed to be the, the housing for the radar come on CIG please <laughs> don't do that don't do that this is like so obscure and so I, I don't know it's just, just so pathetic to have a radar right here this looks like a, a, a smuggling compartment rather than a radar housing are we really going to put the radar in that basket over there? Really? 
no, 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 the radar shouldn't be there. Uh, somehow, I just don't think the radar should be hiding underneath the, uh, the steps. So take out all of these components from here, guys. So take all of this, all of this, this stuff out, put it outside where you can access it from the outside, not from the inside, for all the reasons that I stated before. So you guys might be wondering, then what do you do with all this space here? Well, that's a great question. How about we move these beds? These two beds. So let's move them right here. When the housing, when the components are out and their housing is out, let's move the bed here. Let's move all of the crew habitational stuff into that cockpit area and make this pretty much make this a uh, an airlock kind of thing. It already is. It already is an airlock. Uh, kind of a door basically it's a it's an airtight door but let's just do that let's move the beds in here let's move the crew the survivable survival um, uh, amenities like basically the the shower and all of that stuff in here so that um, basically you need you can sleep uh, eat and shower in here inside here rather than having these components in here that that's that's what I think uh, um, would make the Harbinger better. Now, of course, you guys can disagree with me or agree with me. That's up to you guys. But, uh, yeah. So, there's a whole kitchen here. So, there's there's a coffee maker. There's, there's storage for food. There's places to warm up uh, your food, your frozen meals. You're ready to eat MREs. And, of course, you have a shower toilet combination as well right here. Now, again, keep in mind that this is a long-range fighter bomber. So the Vanguard series of ships are meant to operate uh, for extended periods of time away from your bases, away from the carriers. So that's why you need these kind of facilities on board to kind of give you that bit of uh, crew comfort. Basically, these are necessities, in fact, and they're not crew comfort. These are actual necessities. How do you not have a toilet on a ship that is designed to be out there for long periods of time? And of course, you got a weapons rack here. I mean, this could easily be inside the cockpit. It could be behind this door, right? So you got a weapons rack here, which you can place four rifles in, four or five rifles in. And then you've got uh, more personal storage for your uniforms and, and equipment and suits and stuff like that, which is pretty cool. Uh, let's go ahead and close this and close this one as well. Now, of course, I love these cameras as well. There's supposed to be a camera here. And of course, there's a turret, turret access um, right here. I want to see if I can access it. There we go. So the turret access drops down, just like many other ships. And then you get in, and it pulls you into the turret. And there we go. So you got that whole pilot gunner mentality here as well. There we go. That's the turret. So we can go ahead and turn it on, power on. Now we got various different things. Switch fire mode, gyro mode. Yep, nice turret. Now the turret is for this one for the Harbinger is rockets. So basically you can fire like those folding fin type rockets that we have in the, in the modern era, right? So I think the ship's power is off, so we can't really um, fire as such right now. But it's basically just dumb fire rockets. Now, so if we move all of this stuff, as I'm suggesting, if we move all of this, all of the crew compartment, crew uh, related stuff, amenities like beds, showers, storage, you know, cooking compartment, all of this can be fitted inside here, right? All of this can be fit inside here. And of course, that would free up more space for more ordnance, which is what I'm going to get, get, get to next. So this part of the ship right here is basically just uh, used up by this ramp here. I'm not sure why it's necessary to have such a large ramp for a ship that isn't... Uh, loading any, anything inside the ship, right? You're not, you're not moving a, anything inside the ship, really. So I'm not understanding why they have such a large ramp. 
It could have been just a drop down ladder and this this space right here could be used for something else. So yeah, the ship uh, as it is loaded out right now. So this is this is my ship. I have loaded it out with uh, my components, obviously, as I said. So uh, it has four size two fixed uh, weapons that you can change out uh, to various different ones. You can you can keep them in ballistic like I have right now. So these are like ballistic uh, cannons. They're not repeaters. Obviously, you can have uh, laser cannons. You can have laser repeaters. You can have all sorts of uh, weapons. This is the most heavy hitting, the most high alpha damage component of, uh, of the ship. Basically, the guns that I think are good. And of course, you can have, you can mount... Uh, a size 5 gun underneath the uh, the chin of the ship now if I'm not mistaken the the harbinger and of course the vanguards are the only ships the only fighters heavy fighters that can mount a size 5 gun at the moment which is pretty hefty so this is the bearing m7a size 5 uh, laser cannon that has also the highest alpha damage of all of the guns size 5 guns that you can place on this ship right here so I'm also I've also equipped it with obviously as I said three size 5 torpedoes and we have four size 4 missiles as well so this this missile is the Pathfinder 4 now I believe the Pathfinder 4 might be still in gray box <laughs> because it looks like the textures aren't finished but this thing this pathfinder 4 and the raptor 4 missiles size 4 missiles are the most high damage of the size 4 missiles that you can uh, carry on the ship now necessarily you guys might not like to to um uh, have the size 4s on the ship you can have size two missiles on the ship you can have size three missiles on the ship and of course the size five torpedoes as well which drop out of here so these th this bomb bay opens now in the future i'm thinking they're going to add bombs as well for this for this ship obviously it's a bomber it's a fighter bomber so it would be strange if it didn't carry uh, some sort of bomb air to ground ordinance as well now here's my suggestion for the weapons the the fixed uh, forward-facing weapons of the ship now guys size 2 four size 2 weapons was a lot back in 2014 <laughs> uh, in Star Citizen now every single ship has almost four size 3 five size 3 weapons I mean the uh, my character shivering <laughs> he's really really cold so I'm gonna go back in I'm gonna go back in and we'll finish this uh, inside. So pretty much every single ship now either has uh, four size threes or four size twos and some ships like the Hurricane for example ha have like two size fours, right? So the Hurricane has two size four missiles. Oh, I'm going, I'm gonna go into hyperthermia. <laughs> You can see the character is really, really cold, really, really cold. Now, as, when 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 the character's clothing gets all frosted up like this, it gets all snow on it, it starts to melt. Now, as the snow starts to melt, you'll see a pool of water <laughs> all over the ship, which is really, really nice, by the way. Anyway, just moving on. Uh, so the Hurricane has two size four guns on the front fixed. Why should this ship? as it is classified as a heavy fighter that is meant to get in there, brawl, and take the hits but deliver lots, large amounts of damage should only have four size two fixed guns. Why should it? Why should that be the case? Right? So why shouldn't this ship have either four size three fixed guns, right? That's, that's like a bare minimum for this ship. Like if the developers are watching this, make sure <laughs> that this ship does what it's supposed to do, right? You guys are promising this as a heavy hitting, you know, straight charger that goes in there and does a lot of damage. Let's just give the weaponry to the ship to be able to do that. Replace these size twos with size threes. 
there's no way this ship shouldn't have four size three fixed guns. I mean, the RSI's latest ship, which we'll be looking at, by the way, very soon, when Invictus starts, the, the Scorpius, I believe it is, has four fixed size three guns. I mean, why shouldn't the Vanguard have four fixed size three guns? Now, in terms of this chin turret, this chin gun here on the turret, I, I don't like it here. I mean, it just looks it looks odd. I'm not sure about you guys, but this looks terrible. Like it, it look it looks like some sort of um, like a, like a I don't know like a like some sort of a patched up like a patching work like where this was just added on the battlefield. It doesn't look like a factory kind of a finished job for the ship. So I recommend the ship to have either four four. Uh, fixed size three guns here in the in the uh, internal mounted like right here fixed or you could give it a fixed single size six cannon right so in the future ammunition for the guns especially ballistic guns uh, since they have bullets they have to come from somewhere right there has to be a box of uh, of ammunition that feeds the guns now the the bigger the gun the less ammunition you'll be able to carry. Obviously, the ammunition for a, for let's just say, a, a 40 millimeter Bofors is much, much bigger than the ammunition for a 30 cal machine gun or a 50 cal machine gun. So you might be able to carry on on a plane, for example, on a, on a World War II plane, might be able to carry, let's just say, a thousand rounds of 50 cal, 12.7 millimeter ammunition. But in terms of cannons, like 25, 20 millimeter Hispanos or 37 millimeter uh, cannons, you could only carry only like probably like 50 shots. So you got to think about that as well. Now, so so my proposal is give this ship the bare minimum, give it four fixed um, size threes here, or give it the option of a fixed size six. Right, so this is this is what the what the Vanguard is supposed to do. This is what the Vanguard series of ships is supposed to do. They're supposed to be hard charging, right in there, in your face, taking up shots, but dealing a, a lot of damage as well. So, a fixed single fixed size six gun would be great, right? But then get rid of this get rid of this chin mounted gun because obviously if you put a ballistic gun size 5 gun here where is the ammunition going to come from guys i mean how many shots of a, of a size 5 cannon would you be able to carry inside the ship realistically not a lot right so it doesn't make any sense to have this chin gun right here add more pylons so add more pylons like this across the ship where you could on some pylons, obviously, carry missiles, bombs, dumb fire rockets, or on some of them, you can carry ex extra guns, right? So if you want extra guns, you, you, you can mount them on the pylon. You don't necessarily have to mount it here, which, where it doesn't really make any sense. Like, how is this... Like, pretend this is a ballistic gun. How is this going to get fed? Which magazine is feeding it? And, and how many rounds will you be able to carry? So this is the kind of stuff that you need to think about, like developers need to think about. So add more pylons for bombs, for missiles, and for guns on some of them. So if the player does want to configure the, the ship to a more of a gun gunboat type of thing, you could do that. But having four size three fixed guns doesn't cut it anymore in the Vanguard. Now having said that, the Vanguard is a absolute kick-ass ship. Right now as it stands, the Vanguard it does really, really well because it has a lot of HP in its shields. It can soak up a lot of shots, and obviously with the with the four size twos and the single size five, you can deal a lot of damage as well. So, the thing is that the vanguards aren't really renewable, as they shouldn't be, right? Th these are really heavily armed ships that can fly straight with a lot of armor. They're not maneuverable dogfighters, but Having said that, the only reason why they win at the moment is because they can survive and take a lot of shots and the other the other guy can't take a lot of shots. For, for example, if, if a saber comes after you or if a hornet comes after you or a gladius or an arrow, they can't take as many shots as you can. You can pretty much soak up the shots, but then at the end, you know, kill them. So I was just thinking, yeah, you know, 
get rid of these size 2s, make them size 3s, or give it a single size 6 cannon, uh, obviously internally mounted and uh, fixed as well. Now in terms of the bombs, just like I said, like if you move all of this stuff out of here, you will be able to fit more missiles and more bombs within the internal bay of the ship. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that's about it for my opinions <laughs> on uh, the Vanguard. So, let's go ahead and close the ramp here. Let's go ahead and close the ramp, and it's really, really cold outside. Nearly got hyperthermic. <laughs> But Invictus, uh, or Fleet Week, I should say, is being held here on Microtech. So it's here in Microtech at the Tobin Exhibition Center. Uh, in the exact same place where last year's um, Intergalactic Aer Aerospace Expo was. So let's go ahead and turn on the ship. There we go. So let's have a look at it from the outside. So the Harbinger has this kind of like olive, drab, green color, right? So this is this is the Harbinger. You can easily recognize it with the uh, with the green. Now, the ship, as I said, is a good ship. It's actually really really nice. Look, in any sort of a PvP kind of an environment, this will come out on top at the moment. And after like physicalized armor has been added. That's going to help it a lot as well. So obviously when you extend and retract the landing gear, you guys can see the wings tuck in because it's a carrier-based fighter. So space is, is, is everything on a ship. So you raise the landing gear, boom, the, the, um, the wings extend out. Now, if I would also make some suggestions for the wings, obviously like later on we're going to have control surfaces like the rudder, uh, the wings like the ailerons and all of that the flaps and stuff like that will be utilized in an atmosphere flight so why not extend the wings right extend the wings make it a swing wing aircraft it is a swing wing aircraft at the moment right so make the wings come out further make the wings a little bit bigger perhaps you could put some pylons underneath the wings as well like i said before and make the ship better so let me know what you guys think. You guys think that I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm wrong. <laughs> you guys think that the ship is perfect as it is right now. I suspect a lot of people will say that. I suspect a lot of people will say that the ship is absolutely perfect the way it is. And I don't know what I'm talking about. And <laughs> they should leave it as it is. Well, if, if you're in that camp, all right, fine. <laughs> I hope you enjoy the Vanguard, but if you guys actually do um, think that the ship does need does need a fix, go ahead and let me know in the comments uh, section below what you guys think or how it should be fixed. Because um, obviously there's there is the, the ship is is an old ship, like right? it's the design is quite old. Like if you look at like I said the Scorpius, the RSI Scorpius, you'll see that. There is a bit of a power creep, right, within the within the ships of Star Citizen. So, ships like the Vanguard, like the Hornet, they kind of get left behind. They kind of get left behind, and they kind of get uh, forgotten by the, the developers. So, yeah, give it a give it a fixed size six gun, or four fixed size three guns. And by the way, I gotta say this: I hate the whole size this, size that type of thing. We should have like um, real names for the weapons, like a 40 millimeter, a 30 millimeter, 50 millimeter, you know, stuff like that. For energy weapons, we can break the weapons based on the amount of energy, kilojoules of energy that they transfer per shot. So that's a much more accurate description of the weapons inside the ship, as well as the missile as well. Like, what is what is a size four? What is a size five? You know, like. We could have close-in missiles, like for example, like the Sidewinders, or long-range missiles, like the Phoenix missiles on the F-14, stuff like that. You know, give it, give it better names. So, anyways, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much uh, for watching this uh, Aegis Vanguard Harbinger uh, review slash suggestion how to fix video. Say thank you so much for watching. Now, this video will be coming out first, and after this. Uh, by the time you guys are watching this, uh, Fleet Week has started, 
and I will be doing videos on every single day for Fleet Week. So uh, I hope to see you guys there. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. I'll see you guys next time.